Over to you, Orlando. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Lucas. So let's get it started. Let me do presentation mode. Okay, so thank you again for joining us. This is our fourth Super Wednesday about OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And today we are going to dedicate the session to Oracle Kubernetes Engine and some other things. Uh, this will be <clears throat> an extensive uh, or intensive session because we are going to provision everything from scratch. And I am actually going to start doing that because I am going to, to use my Kubernetes cluster for the session. So this is going to be slightly different from the other sessions because I am going to go directly to provision my Kubernetes cluster and then I'm, I am going to retake the slides. So this is something that you are going to do um, during the, your scenario, but I will do it right away just for me to have the cluster ready where we get into the Caracola scenario. All right, so I am going to create a Kubernetes cluster. Again, this is, I am doing this because I need to have it where, where I run my scenario, okay? But I want you to see that this is pretty straightforward. So um, I'm going to use the quick create uh, menu. I just need to give a, a name to my cluster and I will use the name that I, um, that I have here because everybody's cluster is going to be the same name. So, and that's it, just the name, the compartment that we've been using, which is lab compartment. We are going to use this latest version from Kubernetes or the one that Oracle is supporting. I am going to use a private subnet. Our cluster is going to be formed by three nodes and I am going to enable the Kubernetes dashboard, all right? And this is just a brief summary, and that's it. So this will take like 10 to 12 minutes, so this is good enough for us to continue with our slides. And then when we finish the slides, I will be back into the console and just validate that my cluster was created. Okay, so again, thank you for joining us. This is our fourth, um, Wednesday that we've been delivering for you uh, the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Calacora scenarios. Today is going to be dedicated to Oracle Kubernetes Engine and some other things. This is all about Oracle Cloud and we would like you to first of all hear what we say about these components, about these platforms, also to see how we uh, follow the Caracora scenario and finally if you want to do it, you can do it yourself. We will be here for about an hour or so. So if you need some support while you um, run the scenario, we can support you. Or if you want to do it on your own, then you can, you can do it as well. And you can contact us via the Slack channel that is in the, in the background here of my Zoom. So um, this is the way that we have been doing, that we've been doing, sorry, uh, the scenarios and and all Wednesdays, we first do a brief introduction about the scenario, about the components that we are going to use. Uh, then we uh, do a demonstration about the scenario. And then we just wait here for you to, to follow the scenario. And if you need help, we will support you. And if you have any Q&A, you can use the, the chat uh, in the Zoom uh, meeting. So you can, you can type us your questions or your doubts and, and we will reply to you, okay? These are the three scenarios that we are going to follow. The first one is to create the Oracle Kubernetes Engine Cluster, which somehow I, I already started it because I need it when I get into the scenario. We are going to create a reverse proxy for our API server. And I am going to explain you why. This is just for the Caracora scenario to, to work properly. And I am going to explain you why. And then we are going to get back to our cluster and deploy some services. So I am hoping that we can do this in the upcoming 60 minutes. So that will be, that will be my objective. So we can do the three scenarios in less than 60 minutes, which is I think pretty good because of all the things that we need to do. So that's a good, that's a good goal for us today. Okay. What do we need to do for the Caracora scenarios uh, preparation? Remember that you need to do the preparation of cloud trial tenancy for real OCI scenarios. This is the one that we show in the first Wednesday. 
and this is the one that we've been using for the last uh, sessions okay so everybody who is in the session probably has already gone through that if this is your first session in order to perform whatever I'm going to do now you need to go first to that uh, Katakura scenario so you need to provision your environment and on top of that environment then you can execute what we are going to show okay this can be done in two ways if this is new for you if you have an OCI cloud trial this is, is good enough for you to to follow the scenario if you already have an OCI tenancy because you are already a customer for, for OCI and you have your own tenancy you can use it as well so those are the two ways that you can you can execute these scenarios all right so again either you have your OCI cloud trial and actually if you register to these scenarios you have been whitelisted I think so you can get some extra credits and also you will not be uh, asked for a credit card all right and if you already have your OCI tenancy you can do it again for everyone who is listening or watching this as a recording if you couldn't attend it in the in the live session and you are just watching the recording then and this is your first time remember that you need to go to the preparation of the oracle cloud, cloud trial uh tenancy all right because this is the prerequisite for this all right okay and the link is in this slide all right so run the first scenario to prepare your oci tenancy compartments bcn subnets user etc will be provisioned on that scenario and from there you can just go to any of the next uh, scenarios okay if you don't have a tenancy or you didn't register to this session and you just happen to be here because you somehow heard about this session and you are here but you don't have your trial right now you can do it now you can go to cloud.oracle.com slash try it and you can create your own your own um, uh, your own tenant all right this is this is kind of a straightforward it takes some minutes but you can do it now if you will and by the end of the session you will have your tenancy on your own all right what are you going to get from preparing your tenant and following that first scenario well this is pretty much what you will be getting all right which is a compartment remember that in OCI we have this uh, concept about compartments and compartments are not, not are not uh, other thing that um, a way or a logical way to uh, group resources all right so what is a resource it's pretty much everything what you create in OCI so it's a uh, VCN, first of all, the public or a private subnet, uh, gateways, groups, etc. Right? So er everything that we are going to do now is within this compartment by the name lab compartment. All right. So we are going to be provisioning the Kubernetes engine within this lab compartment. Okay. So if you want to uh, to follow the the scenario, this is where you will get the the, the Kubernetes engine and, every, and everything that we are going to use. Okay. All right. So in preparation for our OKE scenarios, okay, we need to provision a new Kubernetes cluster, and this is going to be in less than 12 minutes. I have already started because I don't want you to be just waiting for the cluster to be created because I am going to execute the scenario. So this is something that I have already started. You can do it on your own. And actually, the scenario number one about OKE is going to show you how. So you just need to follow those instructions. We need to provision a compute instance with an Nginx server because we are going to use it as a reverse proxy. So most of you that if you are already familiar with Kubernetes, you probably are going to ask yourself or, or yes, asking yourself, why do we need that? It's not that that Oracle per se needs this to, to work in terms of Kubernetes. That's not the idea. But we do need it because from the Katakora scenario, we don't have outbound communication to the port where the API server is listening, which is 6443, all right? So that is blocked, and I'm going to explain you. So because of that, we need to have this reverse proxy, and then the environment in, within Katakora is going to connect through this reverse proxy, and then just uh, communicate to the API server. That's the reason why, okay? And uh, we are going to connect to the cluster and work with it, which is the third part of the scenario, or the third scenario, sorry. And we need to have um, the OCI CLI. We also need um, CubeCDL in order to connect to the, to the cluster, all right? 
Uh, we also need uh, Git because we are going to download a piece of code and as um, um, an API that we develop for you in order to deploy it into the cluster. So you also need Git, and I think that's pretty much what you that's pretty much what you need. All right. So this is this is the scenario. We are going to provision the cluster. We are going to do it within our lab compartment within um, the VCN and subnets that the cluster is going to use. But everything is going to be packed in the um, in the lab compartment and then in order to connect to our api server we are going to use this reverse proxy all right and we are going to do that or everything so there will be no doubt at the end of the scenario of the end of the session on how to do this all right what are we going to do or understanding the service the services that we're going to deploy on top of the, the the cluster we are going to provide a golang based uh, service this is the code that we developed for you. I'm going to mention who, who was the one who developed this. And pretty much the code is just uh, simulating that it is an authentication service. Service. So we are going to use that service in order to first authenticate a consumer. And once it is authenticated, this is going to return a token. And the token is going to be used for, um, for the uh, subsequent calls that we are going to use, which pretty much are to, to get the user profile and also to be able to refresh for a new token. So just think about it as an authentication service. That's what it is uh, depicted in our code, which is Go, as I already mentioned. We are going to be uh, using Redis. And why Redis? Because in Redis, we are going to, to restore those tokens. So this is the way that we are going to, to restore our tokens. And that's kind of the way that we are going to separate the um, the back end of the service and the and the service itself so this can scale if you will without any issues this is for for the for the service perspective this will be a stateless stateless in in some way because this is not going to store the service itself the information about the token but redis is going to be the one that is going to store that okay so this is uh the second bullet in the slide is describing what i'm just what i just said as I already mentioned, the service will be uh, Golang based and uh, the logic of the service is basically to retrieve the user profile and to generate or refresh a new token. Okay, And Redis is, again, is going to be used for um, storing purposes and is going to store our tokens. This is just a very simple scenario. We use this scenario just to show you how to deploy services in your cluster, which is which is pretty straightforward, okay? And this is just a sequence diagram that I just wrote. So you can be clearer in terms of how these um, elements that we are going to deploy are related, all right? So the consumer is going to issue a user authentication. This is going to create a new token and is going to be stored in Redis. And then we are going to return the token to the Go service and from Go service to the consumer with that token the consumer is going to issue a get profile and that get uh, user profile is going to uh, go to redis and return the information of the user and then we will be able to to refresh the token after two minutes so our token is valid for two minutes if we want to refresh it we can do it and we can get or retrieve a new token and then start everything all right so that's that's pretty much the scenario there is nothing there in them there is nothing extra there is nothing complex behind the scenes on, on that regard but this is pretty useful for us to understand what are we going to deploy into our cluster, all right? Okay, so let me explain you a little bit more about how we deploy this in terms of the OCI elements and this thing about the uh, reverse proxy that I've been mentioning throughout the session, okay? So the first thing is um, we're going to deploy a Kubernetes cluster again. This is going to be a three node cluster, as I already showed to you in the beginning of the session. And the API server is listening in port 6443. But it happens then that within Karakoda, we cannot call, we cannot connect to a, an, outbound ser, an outbound service, sorry, through that port. It is blocked. So for outbound communications, if you want to connect to something outside the Karakoda environment through that port, it is blocked, okay? Um, it is blocked for the, the environments that we used in Karakoda. That's something that is, is I don't know, that they, they just have it like that. They have blocked that port for outbound communication, so we cannot use it. And 
well, if that port is not open, then obviously we cannot connect from the Caracol environment to our Kubernetes cluster through kubectl because probably you are new with this or if you are already aware about Kubernetes, that's the way that we issue the commands to the cluster through that port and through that server. So due to it is blocked, we cannot do that. So what is the solution for this? Pretty simple. We are going to provision the cluster, but on top of that, we are going to provision a compute instance. Within that compute instance, we will have Nginx, and Nginx is going to be used as a reverse proxy. Okay? So instead of connect our Caracol environment directly to the API server, we are going to tweak the configuration, and instead of pointing directly to the API server, we are going to connect through this Nginx, and then Nginx is going to pass the command to the API server and we will be able to connect to our cluster, all right? So with that, now we will be able to connect to the, to the cluster through this reverse proxy and we will be ready to go, okay? So it's, that's the reason why we needed to, to provision this Nginx service. That, that's, that's the only reason why. Again, if you are familiar with Kubernetes, this is something that you don't need to do in, in a normal situation. We are doing this about the Nginx server because the environment in, within Karakora is not able to make an outbound call through that port. That's, that's the reason why. And we kind of solved this situation with this, with the Nginx server, as I already mentioned. And it happens that it was useful for us in order to include it as an extra scenario for you. So in this extra scenario, you will learn how to provision a computer instance, which remember in our first session, we did that we already provision a compute instance. So this is kind of a similar situation, all right? Okay, so as with our previous sessions and our previous scenarios, we have the why and the what about this scenario, okay? So why? Because somehow we are trying to build these scenarios and targeted them through this cloud native uh, essence or topic or architecture, okay? So Kubernetes is kind of the foundation for that. So it's pretty normal to use Kubernetes for, for cloud native solutions or for cloud native architecture. So that is why, or that's one of the reasons why we are including this or incorporating this as one of our scenarios. Oracle has an offering for that. Probably you, you are new in, in that situation or you didn't know that Oracle has an offering for Kubernetes. So this is the way that you can learn that Oracle has one. Or if you are deciding on where to deploy your applications and you have already selected Kubernetes, but you are defining into which cloud provider, then this is a good way to get engaged with Oracle. So we want you to try it and test it, okay? <clears throat> OKE runs on top of OCI, so we are leveraging from what everything what we are uh, showing to you and sharing with you. So this is pretty much on top of OCI, so this is using um, the compute instances of OCI, it is using the, the load balancer as a service that OCI has. It is using the Oracle uh, containers image registry. If you want to use that internal private registry, this is also in OCI. Uh, so it is pretty much leveraging on top of OCI. So this is also a good way, good way to get engaged with OCI, all right? And also we picked this scenario because we want you to show you how in less than 60 minutes we can provision everything and we can deploy all these services even or including the, the Nginx reverse proxy. So in our opinion, that's a good, that's a good scenario. And, and I think you, you may have some, some or you, you may have a good time following this, okay? Now, what are we going to do in the scenario? We are going to, first of all, deploy a Redis cluster. Once it is deployed, we are going to deploy our API or our service, which is the goal line that I already mentioned, which is going to simulate an authentication service. Then we are going to deploy that API into the cluster. We are going to test the API and how it is sending the information to Redis and all that stuff. And finally, we are going to scale our API through, um, through Kubernetes. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. I don't know if we have already gone through the first 12 minutes that I think the cluster is taken to get provision. So let's get back to the console. Okay, let me just close this. We, we were here, remember? When we started the session, I provisioned my cluster. And 
is active, okay? So I think we are good on time, we are in a good pace. So now let's get into the Caracora scenarios, okay? So as you already know, we have this website from Caracora where we have, um, we had 16 scenarios last week, but Lucas, I think, has already incorporated one additional one, which is managing a vault with keys and secrets. And if you want to take a look to that, it is, it is already there. So as we mentioned from the very beginning, we will be probably going to incorporate more scenarios and more scenarios on top of OCI. So you can have a complete uh, vision about the, the, um, the power of, of OCI, okay? So the three scenarios that we are going to do are this one, the introduction to Oracle Kubernetes engine, the create a reverse proxy for OKE, as I mentioned, and the introduction to, or sorry, the second part of Kubernetes cluster, okay? So we are all set to go to this, to the first scenario. And this is pretty much just describing what I just mentioned to you. So let's, let's start it. As with our other scenarios, we need to wait for this all set in background uh, file appears here because that means that we have already um, download and install the OCI CLI, which is the one that we are going to use for for the rest of the scenario. Okay, so um, let's just wait for that to happen. And you need to have your OCI config and your OCI uh, private uh, key in order to connect to your tenant. So so please have it um, with you in order to to continue with the scenario. So let's just wait for that, that file to get, okay, so it is here. So now I am going to configure my, my OCI, uh, CLI. So um, the first thing, first thing that I need to do is to copy my config, okay. And then I need to copy my private and once we do this, then we can continue, okay? So let me just test that I can connect to my tenant. So I was able to do it. Let me push this here, okay. Now let me see if kubectl is already installed, which is here, okay? Now we are going to set some variables that we need to connect to our cluster, okay? So we just need to set these variables which are pretty much the region, the tenant OCI ID. Uh, we are going to use the lab ID again that we've been using in the past. So again, I've been doing this for a lot of time. So I am using different IDs every time. So just remember the one that you use in the beginning. Then we are going to get a list of compartments and we, we will be getting the ID of our compartment, which is the lab compartment. And pretty much that's it. The rest of this scenario is to create the cluster that I already showed to you, which is pretty straightforward. The first step is to go to the um, OCI console, and this is located in the developer services menu, or submenu, and in, um, in containers clusters, all right? So just click on that, which is this, this screen, and you will be here as I show it to you in the beginning. So you can just click on create cluster and is this screen, the quick create that I used in the beginning of this session. And then we just need to type our name of our cluster. Please use my first OKE because this is the name that we are going to use in throughout the scenario. If you used another one, it is possible, but just, just uh, keep in mind that some variables are pointing to to this name, so if you are going to use a different one, just remember that. And this is the version that I chose, and also the number of nodes that I chose in the beginning of the session. And pretty much, I just click on next. It was a summary about what we were going to provision. And finally, we had our cluster in the, uh, in the active status. Okay, if you want to do it right now, that's fine. I have already done it, and I already have my cluster up and running. And this is what I just mentioned. I am setting this variable to point to my first OKE. That's the name of my cluster. If you want to use another name, then just keep in mind that you need to set this variable with, uh, with, with the value that you chose, okay? 
Now we are going to create our uh, cube config file in order to connect to our cluster, all right? So these are the steps to, to be followed. So we just need to validate our OCI version. We need to create this folder, which is .cube. Then we need to get the list of clusters that we have. And if you take a look to the next execution command, it is asking for the cluster, which name is my cluster, which is the variable, and the lifecycle state is active, okay? So this is going to get the cluster ID, which is the OCID of this cluster. Remember, every single resource within OCI, it has an identifier, and that identifier is the OCI ID, all right? We just need to export our path, and then we are ready to create our cube config. Okay, let me just clear this screen so you can see it better. So with this, we are going to create or generate the cube config. And why it is through the OCI CLI? It is because it needs to incorporate some of the, um, the signatures that we need, to con we need to use in order to connect to the cluster. This is not just a user password type of connection. We need to, to sign the request. And in order to do that, we need to use some of the things that are incorporated in our uh, config uh, file and also the private key all right so now that we have that we can just ex export this variable and this is where we have the issue of the reverse proxy if you do a kubectl get pods then it must be closed the port because it normally is it's been kind of complicated to to know what are the variables that they use in katakoda in order to have that configuration because sometimes it is working that outbound call, but sometimes it is not. So that is why we created the reverse proxy scenario. So as you can see, this is just a stop there because it is not able to connect to the cluster. Okay, so this is this is that, that was our expectation, right? That's what I've been that, that's what I've been to, uh, talking to you about that situation. So we we are here to fix it. In order to fix it, just go to your root.cube.slash um, config file, which is here, which was created in the previous command. And there you will find you will find sorry this this thing, which is the API server. And as I already mentioned to you, this is serving in port 6443. So just write it down because we will need it for our upcoming scenario. So just write it down. In our case, or in my case, this is the IP address and this is the port. So just write it down. And this is all explained here in the scenario. So this is just go to the file, look for the IP address, okay, which is here. So this is exactly where I am located in, okay? So we cannot proceed with this scenario to connect to our cluster because we need to provision our, uh, our reverse proxy, okay? But what we can do is to use the cloud shell, which is incorporated within your OCI tenant. So we will use a cloud shell just to double check that our, our cluster is up and running. So click on continue in the scenario and then just get back to your OKE console. Okay, so you can do it here if you will. You can click here and, and, and you will open it. And once you are there, which is my case in this situation, I am going to click in the cloud shell button Okay, I'm going to open up a little bit more and just follow the instructions. It says click on the newly created cluster. So, sorry for that. Just put it here. Okay. All right. So, it says click on the newly created cluster, which is this one. So, we are here. We are in this screen. Okay and click on the access cluster. So it is here. And then it also says that copy the command, which is this command, the number two. Okay. So let's do that. Copy the command, which is here. And then open the cloud shell in OCI console and paste the contents of the, of the clipboard. So that's what we're going to do now. I don't know why it is, it is taking a while for my cloud shell to, to, to run. So, okay, so we have it here. Let me copy this, okay. So this is actually going to do exactly the same thing as we just did 
in the Caracol scenario, which is to create the cube config file. All right. So now we may be able to connect to our cluster. Okay. This will not have that issue about, and there you go. Let me just oh, wanted to do it. Okay, I think you can see it, but if we issue uh, get namespaces, we can do it. So our cluster is, is there, it is active. It's been active for the last 24 minutes. So it means that it took like 10 minutes to get provision, okay? If you want to follow this, if you want to create a deployment and just uh, do um, a pretty simple um, uh, deployment into your cluster, you can follow this instruction and that's, that's, that's good. But let me just skip that section in order to follow to the next scenario because we need to, to run a little bit in order to provision our uh, reverse proxy. All right, so let's just get back to Karakoda. And let's go to the next scenario. Our next scenario is to provision the, um, the reverse proxy for our OKE API server. So let's do it. So this is pretty much going to, to work as a reverse proxy to connect to our cluster, just as in this image is depicted. So we have our environment in Karakora. We are going to provision this compute instance. And from this compute instance, we will be able to jump to, to our API server, this port, is going to be 443, which is open from for outbound calls within Karakora. All right, so so let's just do it. This is exactly the same thing in terms of waiting for the old set in background uh, file to to appear. So let's just give it some minutes and and we will continue. Okay. So what have we learned so far? We just provision an OKE cluster, a Kubernetes cluster on top of OCI. It took like maybe 10 to 11 minutes to get provision. I actually did it on my own before we get started. I was able to connect to the cluster via Cloud Shell, and I also show you why we cannot connect because of this situation about the outbound calls from the Caracol environment through port 6443. And now we are on top of our um, reverse proxy scenario. So we are going to provision um, a compute instance and install uh, Nginx. So let me just um, configure my CLI. So we need, again, my configure. Now we are ready to go. Again, we need to set the lab ID. Again, I have done this many times in the past, so I'm going to use a different ID. I will just test that I can connect to my tenant with this, so I was able to do it. So now let's just move faster, all right? So, um, we are going to provision a compute instance. It's going to depend on your region because every region has different IDs for the VM images. So we are going to learn it, learn it just right away. Just keep in mind that the name of your compute instance is going to be Nginx lab plus your lab ID. So you will get a new compute instance within your lab compartment and we are going to install Nginx, all right? In order to provision a compute instance, we need to, to create uh, some keys if you want to connect to the instance. So we are going to store those keys in this folder in root keys lab. And I think we are ready to go. Just set this set of environment and uh, environment variables. So we are setting um, the region. We are setting the display name of our, our compute instance. We are setting the image ID at the same time. We are setting some other variables, okay? In my case, I am in Ashbourne, so my availability, sorry, this is not the availability domain. I am in the region, this is wrong, this is the region to be used is this one, is Ashbourne. But if you are in a different region, then just, just execute this because this is going to set your, your region, okay? So this is going to connect to your tenant and get your region. In my case, again, it's, it's Ashbourne, so my region is, is Ashbourne, all right? Okay, so now, Let's just read this table because this is every uh, image uh, in their different region has a different OCI ID, okay? So in my case, it's Ashbourne, so I am going to copy this, this ID, okay? In order to continue with the scenario. But if you are in a different region, then just, just, um, just take a look to, sorry for that. Just take a look for your region or look for your region and get the OCD, all right? 
and it says export the image ID with the value that you just copied. So this is, in my case, I already have it because I am in Ashburn. But if you are in a different region, just copy the ID and paste it here. And that's it. Now, if I validate this, I can see that this is my image ID, all right? Now let's generate the keys. Let me just clear this out so you can see it better. Now let's generate the keys and we are going to use this. And this is asking me about the folder where this is going to be stored, the keys again. So use that one, please use that one. Just choose a passphrase. This is up to you, okay? And this has just regenerated our keys. Okay, so now we have our keys. And now um, we need to create an ingress rule to open port 443, because remember, we are getting connected through, through the compute instance with that port. We have already opened that in our previous scenarios, because remember, for the API gateway, we use that. So you can double check that, if you will, in this submenu, which is networking. And also, you can go to virtual networks. And once you are there, you can go to the VCN that you are using. In my case, in my case is VCN Lab, which is the one that we just created. Then you need to go to the public sub subnet. And once you are there, you can go to the security list. Okay. So I already have it. I, I actually did it uh, twice. If you already have it, then you, you, don't, you don't need to open up the port. Let's imagine that I don't have it because that may be your case. So I, I'm going to remove this just for you to learn how to, how to incorporate the new, uh, I don't know what happened. That was kind of weird. Let me go again here and the security list. Okay, so they are gone. I don't have that, those rules now. So let me just get back to my, to my scenario. So I am going to uh, open up that, um, that port in my security list, okay? So for, in order to do that, we need to execute this. This is going to prompt to us if we want to do it. So just IPS or Y. And once you do that, then you will get in, okay? So it just appear, okay? So I have just opened 443 in our ingress rules. So that's what we needed. Okay, so uh, this is just explanation about how we did that. We, we incorporated this as the source, which is pretty much everybody, through uh, port 443. We are going to open it for ingress. So that's what this, um, this configuration means. So we already have that. We have already checked that, okay, which is this thing. So now we are ready to provision our compute instance that is going to serve to us as a reverse proxy. So we need to, to give the configuration of the instance once we created it. So we need to export this file. We are going to open it. And remember, we just wrote down this IP address, which is the one where our API server is currently listening. So we need to copy. We need to open this file. And it says, change the IP address in the proxy uh, pass element, which is um, this element, and change it to the IP address that you got in the previous scenario. In my case, it's this one. And, and the port does not to be changed because this is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to use Nginx as a reverse proxy to send the communication to this server, to this port. And so we don't need to change that. So now we are ready to go. Let me just close this and validate that it took my changes because this is, this is the key on, on, on all these configurations, so it, it did. So now let me just provision the instance. How to provision an instance, an instance is pretty straightforward. It is this command. So you can learn how to provision in a single command a compute instance, which is going to be running an Nginx server, which is going to be used as a reverse proxy. How we are going to do that with just this command and this configuration file. This configuration file, it has the instructions that I would like to include 
once I create the instance. So everything is going to be in just one single command. Okay, so just like that, we are going to create our compute instance. This is going to take like maybe two minutes. If you go back to your um, console and you get to compute and instances, then you will see in your lab compartment that you have the three compute instances, which are the three nodes for OKE, which are this thing, these three, sorry. And we have this Nginx lab 654 being provisioning because that, that's exactly what we are doing now. All right. So we let let it let let's just wait for this to happen. And this is going to take like two minutes or so. So we need to wait for the um, prompt to get returned or we just need to wait for this to set running. Okay. It has already assigned an a public IP address, which is something that we need. If you take a look to the command here, we are not just uh, saying to to OCI to create a compute instance from a uh, from a particular image and a particular shape, because in, which is in these variables. Image ID and shape has been set before. I already told you about the image ID. This is the image ID that is, that is using for you. So it is telling to this that this image ID should be used, this shape, and also that it needs to assign a public IP. And that's exactly what it's doing now. It has already assigned it, which is this one, and it is already running. So the prompt should be back now. Now we have it. And now we just want to list it. We just want to list our compute instance, which is here. So we, we, we may have some details about our instance, our newly created instance, which are there. And what did we install? Again, I have already explained it to you. Nginx with this configuration, we are going to use it Nginx as a reverse proxy. We change the IP address and point it to the port of where the API server, server is running. Okay, now we are going to get the IP address from, from the Caracol environment. I mean, the IP address of the newly created uh, compute instance from the Caracol environment. Why? Because we are going to test that it is already serving in that port and it is routing to our API server. So this is going to get the IP address for us, which is 121, blah, 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 157, which is the same thing as we have here, okay? In order to test it, we need to make a pretty simple telnet, which is going to take a couple of additional minutes to, con to connect, okay? This is, this is expected. This is going to take like two minutes to respond because in the configuration that we used, we need we not only provision the compute instance, but we install the Nginx, but we also tell to Nginx to reboot once it was installed. So it is, one thing is the compute instance to be provisioned, which is already done. But the second thing is the Nginx to be installed and also provisioned. So it is taking now the minutes for the Nginx to be installed and also to be configured as a reverse proxy. And also we are going to reboot the Nginx to take the, um, the configuration. And once all that is done, then then we will be we will be able to connect to the to the compute instance to this port. So again, this is going to take a couple of minutes, but but it will. So just just be patient. All right. So so far we have created our cluster. We have provisioned a compute instance with nginx. We are going to use that as a reverse proxy. Again, we are just waiting for that to happen. And once that is done, uh, we will be able to to proceed to our final scenario, which is to use the cluster, but now through this uh, through this server. So let's let's just wait for 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 that to happen, and and we will be ready to go. Okay, um, it shouldn't take that long. Hopefully, I didn't did anything wrong. Let me just take a look to the configuration file, which is the one that is relevant. It seems to be fine. So let's just be patient. Okay. Okay. So we, we have it up and running. We are able to connect to our public IP through this port. So we are ready to go to our next scenario. Okay. We can continue um, to close the scenario or you can just go straight forward to 
to the second part of the Oracle Kubernetes engine, all right? Okay, sorry if I haven't answered your questions through the chat because um, I am running the scenarios, but I will take a look when we, we, we finalize this scenario, okay? So let's go to part number two, which is to use the OKE server. Um, it is the same thing. We just need to wait for, for the um, OCI CLI to be installed. I am just going to write down my IP address of our computer instance because we are going to use it a lot throughout the scenario or it is relevant for this scenario. So let's just have it there. Okay. And let's just wait for, for the OCI CLI to be installed. And once it is, then we will be ready to go to connect to our OKE. And we took like 20 minutes for the slides. We started like 10.30 or something, my time. And we have 20 minutes from there to now. And we have already our cluster. We have our compute instance as a reverse proxy. And we are ready to test our, our Kubernetes cluster. So um, it is, it's been pretty fast. I think we are in a good pace now. We just need to be patient now again to, to wait for the all setting background file to, to appear. And once it's there, then we will be ready to go. Okay. So let's just wait for that. Okay. So hopefully you, you are able to follow the scenarios um, and you can get the same results that I'm having now. All these uh, weights because of this are basically uh, because of the code environment and sometimes it is faster as you, as you could see in our first, in, in our previous scenarios, but this time it took so a little bit more. But now we are ready to go. And again, I need to configure my, okay. So we are ready to go. Let me just set this environment variable, test our OCI CLI. It was able to connect, test that we have kubectl installed. We need to set our region uh, and some other variables, the tenant OCA ID. We also need to set our lab ID again and Keep in mind that you can reuse the one that you've been using in the past, but since I've been doing this for, for the last two, three months, then I have used several numbers. So I'm going to just use a random one, which is 92 in my case. And I will just set uh, this variable to get the compartment ID. And this compartment ID is the one for the lab compartment and set my cluster name. Again, if you are using a different cluster name, you can change it here, all right? Now let's do the same thing that we did in our first scenario, which is to create the cube config, because this is a different uh, environment from Karakoda. So the one that we've been using has been already destroyed. So, so this is a new one. And let's just create the cube config file. For that regard, we need to get the OCE ID for the cluster. And once we have that, we, we have just created the config file with this command and we just need to export it so we can use it through the rest of the scenario. But this is the, the step that we were eagerly waiting for, for that to happen, which is to edit the config file. Okay, so for that, we need to go to dot cube and this is the file, which is config. And this is getting connected to the original address for my, our, sorry, for our API server. And we need to change it for the compute instance IP address that we just provisioned, okay? But this is not through port 6443, now it is through port 443. So this is all explained right here. It explained to you where to locate the IP address and where to change it, which is this thing. And I think we are ready to go. Let me just double check that this was saved properly. So this is our new IP address and this is the port. So we are good. And we are going to be using this flag, the insecure skip TLS verify flag, because we are using this reverse proxy. And if we don't use that uh, flag, then we are not going to be able to connect to the cluster. So this is something that it is not necessary in normal conditions, but it is necessary for our, 
for our scenario. So now I'm there, okay? Now we are able to connect from Karakora to our OKE cluster, all right? So this is, this is pretty good. This is just as expected. This is the same thing that it is here. So now we are going to create a namespace in order to deploy all the elements that we are going to use for our scenario. This is a, a good practice if you are deploying things into Kubernetes to group them into, into namespaces. So those are logical groups or isolation groups within your cluster, all right? In order to, to have our code ready to be deployed, we are going to clone this uh, Git repository. This, was, this code was uh, developed by a good friend of mine, which is Ricardo Ortega. And he is called El, El Muchacho. If he's here now, he may be happy that we are using his code. So we are using Ricardo Ortega code right here for, for, this, um, for this scenario. And the first thing that we're going to do is to create our namespace. So the namespace is, again, a logical name that we use to group elements within our cluster. So uh, first of all, we are going to list the, the, the created namespaces, the normal namespaces that, that are created when you provision a cluster for Kubernetes. And we are going to create a, a new namespace. And that namespace is going to be called OCI lab plus the lab ID, okay? So with this command, we can create a namespace. And if you reissue the very same command about get the namespaces, then we are going to have one more, which is the OCI lab 92 in my case, which is pretty well described in this, in this um, part of the scenario. And we are going to get pods from that namespace, which is going to return nothing because there is nothing deployed currently in that namespace, okay? Now we are going to deploy Redis. As I mentioned, we are going to use that in order to store our tokens and make some um, usage of Redis as our storage for, for our scenario. So in order to do that, we are going to, first of all, deploy Redis into, into our cluster. Uh, this is a typical YAML file that describes uh, Redis and that can be used in order to deploy it, to deploy it sorry, into a Kubernetes cluster. We are going to change directory into our Redis session API, which is the code that we just cloned it. And we are going to apply the first YAML, which is the Redis deployment. Okay, so once we do that, okay, the, the deployment of Redis has been created. Okay, if we reissue the get pods, now we are going to have more, more pods in our namespace, or at least the Redis pods are going to be there, which is this one. So let me reissue it again. So it is already running, okay? Let me do it again without the minus W. So we have one path already running there, which is Redis, okay? So it is there. Let me just clear the screen. So we are in this step. We have already deployed Redis. And now we are going to deploy the service for Redis. So now, now issue this uh, command, which is going to apply this configuration, which is described in this YAML file. So now we have a service, and this should be just like this, okay? So we have, that is, um, the service is now being deployed, or is deployed. So now let's just, just continue. We have already deployed Redis as a deployment, and we have a service on top of that. And now we are going to build the image of our code, which is the Golang service, okay? We cloned, we have cloned the repository, but now we need to create an image for that code. And we are going to deploy, or first of all, register the image into the private uh, image registry within OCI, and then we are going to deploy it into Kubernetes. So we are going to build, okay? We are going to build our image, okay? So. It should be pretty straightforward. It's, you know, it's a pretty small piece of code, so it shouldn't take that long. Okay. And once it is created, the image, we are just going to issue a Docker images just to see that the image was properly created. And, and from there, we will be ready to go to deploy the service into, into our cluster. Okay. We just, need the, we just need to publish the image into our registry and then we, we will be fine to, to continue. So it is taking a little bit to push 
or to create, sorry, the image here in, in my environment. So hopefully your environment is a little bit fast, faster. But as you can see, it is taking a while to download the, some of the dependencies. So I think it's almost done. And let's just be patient again. This um, Karakora scenarios part of the key is that is to be patient, both if you are developing a Karakora scenario or you are following a Karakora scenario, one of the things that I really or strongly recommend you is to be patient because we try to automate mo most of the things and it is, it is a challenge to do that. So, so just be patient, it is taking its time to, to get created and it is almost there. Okay. All right. So it's okay. So the image is created. If we issue a Docker images, it is here. This is our image. And now we need to tag it. We need to tag it. In order to do that, we need to set some environment variables. And we need to tag it with the name of our namespace, with the name of our OC image registry. Okay. And that's exactly what we do in this step. We are going to tag the image. So if we reissue Docker images, then we have it tag it like this. You need to have it in your own region and your own namespace, right? And I'm going to show you uh, in, in, in a few minutes the, the registry, okay? So now we need to register into our Oracle container image registry, which is a private registry. In order to do that, we need to get some elements and we need to set these variables, okay? And we need uh, our password that we've been using to connect to the, to, to the Docker um, repository in the past. Remember when we were doing the function scenarios that we needed that user and that password, that's the very same user and, that very, and the very same password that we've been using in those scenarios of functions when we deployed our our function. So this is in my case the, the user. So I need to log in to my registry, my repository. I'm going to stop um, sharing to copy my my password. Okay. And let me get back here. Okay. All right, so I already have my password pasted, paste it here. And, okay, I am logged in into my repository. Okay, so I, I'm going to push it there. So I just created the image, which contains my Go um, code, which represent our service. So now it's pushing it, pushing into this registry, okay? And let me go to, to the registry so I can show it to you. So if you go to developer services and you go to OSIR, then this is almost done. But you can see this is session API, okay? So this should appear here, okay? This is our uh, registry, our image registry. So this, once it is pushed, Okay, which is now, you can take a look to the image right here. Okay, so you can just scroll down and, and, and look for your image. Okay, so let me let me do that because, okay. Let me just skip this because I, I can see it, but it's here. Okay, it is here. Okay, all right. And once we have it there, we are we are ready to deploy this service. So um, let me just get back to the step where we were. So we were here. We just take a look to the registry, which I already showed it to you. You can open it from here if you will. And now we are going to deploy it. So um, let me just set some information here because we need to create a secret for our cluster to connect to the registry and pull the image and deploy it on top of the um, of the cluster. So we need again to set my user. Now we need to set the password. So again, let me just stop sharing so you can have it. 
and okay. Okay, get back. All right, so this is, we need to do this because we need to create a, a secret. So uh, that's my email. Okay, all right. So we, we need to create a secret in our cluster. That secret is going to hold our keys for the image registry and the secret was properly created so it is here and now we need to open this file which is here in our file system which is here kubernetes and we need the um this session api jamo because currently it is pointing to a different docker repository so we need to get the one that uh, or the image that we used in in the previous step okay so the image is here you can get it from this variable so just copy and just paste it okay and let me just close this and let me just um, open it again so I can be sure that it was it was edited properly okay so I think we are ready to go let me just close all this so we have created the image we have published the image we have um, configured our jaml file to point into that image so now we are going to deploy it so we are going to apply the configuration and this is going to create the service and now we can issue this to see if the service has been deployed and this is going to be uh, be published through a load balancer and the load balancer needs also to be um, provisioned. That load balancer is part of OCI as well. So if we go to networking and load balancers, we need to have in our compartment a newly created load balancer, which is this one. So as you can see, it was created today, Wednesday, July 1st. So it is our um, load balancer. So if I, if I reissue this, then this is going to assign an IP address, which is this one, okay? So you cannot move forward before you get assigned to that IP address, and which is an IP address from the load balancer service within OCI, okay? So now, finally, we provision, we created the reverse proxy, we deploy our pieces or our artifacts, so we are ready to, to test whatever we just we just deployed. So we are going to get the, the IP address of, of our load balancer and we are going to store it in this variable, session underscore API, and we are going to issue a get into that service. Okay. When I do that, it says that I need to get login because remember, this is an authentication service. So the, our second call is going to be a post and now I'm going to be using a, a user and a password and this is going to return uh, a session ID. Okay, which is this one. And with this session ID, I will be able to get my profile, okay? So now it is returning my profile, okay? So it is pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple, but it is illustrative for us to test our cluster, okay? If after two minutes, I don't make any call or I can continue making calls, but I want to refresh my, my token for a new session ID, I can do this, which is just to refresh the token and, and, and that will be completely fine. And again, with that new session ID, I can get my profile. So everything is working properly. Our services are deployed. They are responding. The load balancer was properly deployed and provisioned. The public address is, is working fine. Our reverse proxy is working fine as well. Okay. So now it is time to, to wrap up. I am just going to do a demonstration about how to create more replicas about our services. In this case, our API service, which is the Golang code, Currently, just have one replica, which is this one. So, um, I, as you can see, if I issue a get pods, I just have one session API pod running. So, I am going to scale it with this command to 10 replicas. This is something that you will not be doing in this fashion because probably you want to control how or when you get more replicas, but this is just illustrative. 
So if I reuse reissue, sorry, the get pods command, then I will get more uh, more replicas. Obviously, I had one. Now I have more. I have ten. I just need to wait for all the the pods to get created. So it's going to take some seconds to do that. Almost all of them are already running. So from the perspective of our application, this is just get this is just getting replicated. But the consumers does not need to do anything extra. They are just going to continue consuming our service in the same way. But they don't know that behind the scenes we now have 10 replicas for this very same service, which is pretty cloud native in itself. Okay? So now we have our 10 replicas. And now we can, again, reissue our login. And now I have login. But just keep in mind something. Just take a look to this, um, to this names because those are the pod names this is getting served by this specific pod name so if i reissue again this is being served for another pod and so on how do i know that because if i reissue the get pods you will get the name of the pods and for example this one which is srt at the end is srt is this one but this other one which is xcg is this other one so every single call is being served by a, by a different pod, pod and our load balancer is doing its work in order to run robin the calls okay if you want to do an extra step you can if, if you have a way to stress our service you can do an auto scale you can configure it through this command so if the cpu percentage go through a certain level then you can increase the number of replicas automatically so this this will be an extra step for you Okay, so it is done. I think we, we did it in 60 minutes because I started at 10.4 10, or something my time. And now we are 11.11 11, my time. Um, I did provision the cluster before we started, but you saw how I did provision the cluster. And then we did everything within 60 minutes. So I think that's quite a, an achievement for us. And I think we are open for questions and answer. I'm going to to stop sharing my screen and read your 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 comments because I have a lot of chats here that I didn't read before. Um, so I don't think there are any unanswered questions. Oh, okay, okay, good. Um, okay, so. I think everything is responded. So thank you. I, I, I will be here, Lucas, as well, I think, just for you to, to follow the, the scenarios if you are interested. Um, I know it's large, but as you can see, we were able to do it completely in, in those 60 minutes. And everything is up and running and it is working properly. We were able to to go through the problem about the outbound uh, connection through the port. So, so I think we are ready to continue. So you can do it on your own. We will be here for another 30 minutes or so. If you have any questions, uh, we will be here. All right. So thank you. Thank you for attending and hopefully you, you enjoy it as much as I did. Um, we put a lot of effort on the scenario. So we try always to make them work as expected and every time that we have these type of challenges as the reverse proxy then we try to give a solution for that okay so thank you thank you again Orlando, thanks for the excellent presentation and the nice workshop thank you everybody for attending lucas what will be the topic next week uh, next week the main theme will be cloud operations and we will be looking specifically at the vault service with uh, keys and secrets. We will be uh, getting a sneak preview of the logging service, which is currently uh, not generally available, but it will be coming. We will be looking at monitoring, alarms, notifications and health checks. And finally, we, will, uh, we look at um, infrastructure as code, automation, using the Terraform provider and the resource manager. Great.
So we're looking forward, make sure you join next Wednesday. And also this session was recorded. So the on-demand recording is available at the Red Expert Alliance YouTube channel. Thank you very much for attending. I will stop recording now.